Should you choose Roth or traditional, we're gonna talk about exactly how the math plays out and which makes you more money. This applies for a traditional and Roth IRA, 401k, 403b, TSP, and 457b. Roth means you're contributing after tax dollars. So you're gonna pay taxes on the money now, and when you retire and withdraw that money, you have no taxes due. Traditional means you're gonna defer the taxes to retirement. So you're gonna contribute pre-tax dollars now, and on the back end, when you go to withdraw that money, that is when it's going to be taxed. So dollar per dollar, which makes more money? Well, let's look at Roth Randy and traditional Tom. Traditional Tom and Roth Randy both make the same exact amount of money and they both contribute 15% into their 401k. Roth Randy obviously does Roth and traditional Tom does traditional 401k. For them, 15% is gonna be $10,000 they're gonna to contribute towards their retirement. For traditional Tom, he's gonna do $10,000 into his traditional 401k. For Roth Randy, he's going to do 10,000 minus the 22% taxes he's going to get hit on right now, therefore leaving him with $7,800 to invest in his Roth 401k. In 20 years, traditional Tom's 10,000 grows to $73,280. Roth Randy's $7,800 grows to $57,158. But when traditional Tom goes to withdraw that money, he's going to pay 22% taxes. And 22% taxes on the 73,000 is going to leave him with $57,158 to take home. Roth Randy already paid taxes on the money when he first contributed it. Therefore, he is going to be able to take home the $57,158. So therefore, both Roth and traditional, dollar per dollar, you take home the exact same amount of money. I hear a lot of people that support the Roth account, like a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k, saying, the argument, would you rather pay taxes on $1,000 now or taxes on a million dollars later? Well, that's an invalid argument. It's not logical. Because with all other things equal, dollar per dollar, Roth and traditional comes out the same every time. And this applies whether you have a higher income, whether you're maxing out your 401k and IRA, or whether you're only doing $50 a month. It ends up being the exact same. It doesn't change anything. Or whether you plan on living longer in retirement or dying sooner, it still does not change the math doing Roth or traditional. However, there are two ways that a Roth or traditional could end up beating one another. And this is why you're watching this video. Number one is gonna be a tax bracket change. Number two is gonna be the inheritance. If you think you're going to be in a higher tax bracket when you retire, then Roth would be better for you. In other words, if you think your retirement investments are going to make you more income than your job does right now, then do Roth. This is gonna be the phrase like retiring better off. You'd wanna do Roth. And this typically is gonna be the person who invests early and often. On the other side, traditional would be better if you think you're gonna be in a lower income tax bracket when you retire. In other words, your retirement investments don't make you as much income as you do right now in your working life. So this is typically gonna be the person who starts investing or saving for retirement later in life. Estimating this right, could make you hundreds of thousands of dollars more. That's why I took the time to put together a table for you guys that shows the breaking points between Roth or whether to do traditional. This doesn't factor in social security or if you have a pension or sort of like rental property income. So if you do have extra sources of income other than your IRAs or your 401ks, I would err on the side of Roth if you're close to these numbers. To analyze this table, find the percentage of your salary you invest into retirement, whether that be 5%, 10%, 15%. And then look at the corresponding years until retirement column. If you plan on retiring in less than that amount of years, do traditional. If it'll be more years until you retire, do Roth. So for example, the first one, if you're doing 5% of your salary and you're gonna retire in more than 43 years, you should do Roth because you're probably gonna be better off in retirement. 
If you're gonna plan on retiring in less than 43 years, then you do traditional because you're probably not gonna have as much money when you retire. Let's look at the 15% margin. If you do 15% of your income right now into retirement, the 30 years is the threshold mark. So if you're gonna retire in more than 30 years, so you say you're 25 years old and you're not gonna retire until you're 60, that would be 35 years, therefore do Roth. If you're doing 15%, and you're gonna retire in less than 30 years, you'd probably be better off doing traditional. But again, this isn't factoring in any other extra sources of income that you may make through Social Security if it's still there or a pension or anything like that. And you can check out the full table on TimWolf.com. I broke down almost every percentage from 5% up to 90% of your salary. The second way a Roth or traditional could beat one another is going to be the inheritance you leave behind. And guys, on average, this could be a $2.2 million difference. Let's look at average Joe, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, the average income right now is $63,179. So that's what average Joe makes as a household income. Over the course of average Joe's working life, he will get raises and or promotions that will increase his income 2.5% year over year, which keeps him up with the average inflation rate since 1990. If average Joe were to go the traditional route, he would contribute 15% of his pre-tax income towards a traditional account, like a traditional IRA, 401k, TSP. 15% equals about $789 of average Joe's income, and that slowly increases as he gets raises and promotions. Average Joe does this from age 25 to 60, and he retires with approximately 3.5% $8 million in his traditional retirement accounts. So if average Joe was to withdraw 6% a year in retirement to live off of that, he would end up withdrawing a total of $8.1 million over the course of his retirement if he were to die at age 85. And he would leave an inheritance of $5.79 million. That is after the inheritance would be taxed at a high rate of about 37%. But let's compare that to see what would happen if average Joe does all Roth accounts. So he still makes the same amount of money, but he's gonna contribute 15% of his after-tax income. So average Joe starts doing $694 a month from age 25 to 60, and that slowly increases as he gets raises and promotions. And at age 60, average Joe, who did Roth, would finish with approximately $3.3 million. And now that is all tax-free money because he already paid taxes on it. So he withdraws 6% a year. He would take home a total of $8.1 million, the exact same amount as the traditional did, like we talked about earlier. However, this is where Roth is going to beat traditional. Because average Joe, who did Roth, is going to leave behind an inheritance that would be approximately $7.9 million, which is 2.2 million more than the traditional. Why? Because the Roth inheritance is completely tax-free. And when you leave behind a large sum of money or anyone makes a large sum of money, it's gonna get hammered with taxes, about 37%. So the beneficiary of the Roth gets to take home all that money and not pay taxes on it. That's why it ends up being $2.2 million more if Average Joe had done Roth. But keep in mind, that's not gonna benefit Average Joe because Average Joe's already gonna be dead. That's only gonna benefit Average Joe's loved ones. And I do have another video explaining the Roth IRA and some specific Roth IRA benefits. You can check that video out here. Otherwise, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of my videos that come out every single month. Monday. I'll see you next week.